Hi, I'm Dr. Bill White, and I'm a general dentist that's done nothing but orthodontics for the last 42 years, and I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society, and I'm board certified in that, and have taught orthodontics for years, and I want to go through a case that I did years and years ago and uh, there's some things in it that are interesting and things that you yourself might learn from the cases you have by just observing what happens in them so kind of watch uh, as we go through this it's uh, not any uh, dramatic case at all but it's it has some good lessons in it so i want to pass those on on to you uh, this young man uh, had an open bite, a dental open bite. His skeletal situation was pretty normal, uh, but he had this uh, uh, dental open bite. Uh, let me show you from looking at him at the first. He sucked his left thumb, uh, and he's a little embarrassed about it but it caused his dental uh, arch there to go curve up if you'll observe uh, it kind of turns up like that and it's really bad I've got a picture of it uh, in the uh, deal showing you how, how it is later on uh, we'll go through this pretty quick and there's some things here we need to learn about this now, the thumb coming in from this side, it made this side go up, of course, and uh, these teeth were touching over here, and these were touching back here at the back of the mouth. And if you hold anything in there long enough or keep it in, the, in place like that, uh, these teeth erupt together, they come together, probably changes the vertical height of the lower third of the face to some extent in this part down in here. Uh, well, I know it, it does to some extent, but you turn it loose and you start functioning normal, and then these teeth will be intruded again and go back uh, to your normal uh, vertical if you get it uh, soon enough or anything like that. Now, just a nice young man. I enjoyed working on him, and uh, I got to know him pretty good. And he, uh, we were able to do this. Now, this was back in the early 70s, and we had bands on his teeth. And I learned something from having banded teeth like this. So we put bands on him, and you, when you're trying to close a bite like that, you get the, one of them just straight and the other one straight, and then you put something in between the anterior part, and it pulls it down both together as long as you got a pretty good sized arch wire in there. Uh, that was the objective and everything, and you can pull it too. Now you get it down there, the guy is not supposed to be able to put his thumb in there or tongue or whatever else he was holding in that space and you could close the bite down. Uh, you don't want to bend it this way because you need to have an opening in this to get this straight and maybe a slight curvature in it, you see. And you're going to pull from here. Now we soldered little brass wires onto the arch wire and we're putting elastics in here at night you see which would do two things if you put your elastics in here where his thumb goes it's hard for him to put the thumb in there but people can put their thumb in there almost regardless of what you do so we did various things to prevent thumbs from wearing gloves and doing different <laughs> putting uh, bit or something on the, put a little quinine on their thumb or something like that um, I never did do that do that but I've heard of people doing that 
uh, to stop them from coming in there with a thumb or else we put cribs in there with those uh, wire fingers or something they would poke the thumb so they uh, would keep it out of their mouth but anyway uh, he's a nice kid and we uh, got him to we felt stop sucking his thumb but now uh, we had his teeth pulled down real close and I think we took out some bite well we did take some bite cuspids out to bring that back again let me see and uh, well we got up above we're missing one but now below we're not uh, here uh, okay here's the models now what this is uh, let me show it to you on the models they're not too good of pictures it didn't take uh, all that good of pictures back in the early 70s but uh, that shows the same thing now here we are back again in the uh, braces and we've got this we're pulling it down now from the from elastics in the front of the mouth we're closing it down now here was something that I learned I had these teeth down real good like this and this tooth was down here now the band came uncemented just this cement broke loose on this one day and then uh, just a few days he got back in but this tooth rose up about uh, oh, at least a millimeter maybe a little bit more than a millimeter the tooth just rose up so that tells us one thing if you pull teeth where you want them to go don't turn them loose right soon in other words you got to hold them there for a while and let the uh, root structure up here the bone tend to fill in and get in a comfortable position because if you just pull one down in here you've got the periodontal membrane is kind of stretched out in here it doesn't stretch much but it pulled down and it'll just pull the tooth back up and that's exactly what happened right here see this tooth just went right back up there's no problem we put the band back where it was and then pull the tooth back to line it up with the rest rest of the teeth but that's something that I observed that don't think the tooth is going to stay right where you put it if you just pull it over there and then turn it loose it's going to go back to that way so you have to hold it there and have to get it settled in that area now another simple thing that we learned in this and I don't know why people haven't picked this up earlier now you see we banded this tooth back and it and pulled it back we just put the band in, and then I took a I may have had to just kind of bend that arch wire to engage it there of course it had no problem pulling that tooth back with the rest of the rest of the teeth right there but this young man we never did find out exactly what he was uh, making this open up a little bit would separate it we didn't have a good uh, contact in in there and I didn't want to ask him uh, if he was still sucking his thumb he he uh, was just a kid when we started on him but he grew up to about a six foot four big guy and he was a policeman in our town there <laughs> and I wasn't about to bring him in and say are you still sucking your thumb <laughs> I just uh, I tried to figure out I said well, there's something you're doing whether he's chewing on his tongue or his lip or people do various things you know bite the fingernails uh, put their finger and chew on something up there and tend to open their bite I mean if you hold a cigar in a certain place it'll open your bite uh, things that open your bite you wouldn't think will open the bite then I want you to observe what happens when the teeth uh, do go up the teeth move and they open big time now let's go through and just go ahead and finish this uh, there's no big uh, 
the orthodontic part is real simple. We took out some uh, uh, bicuspids up above, so we'd have the upper molars would be in contact with the lower first uh, or second bias back there. Uh, and we don't do that anymore, but uh, very rarely. But that was something we did in the early 70s, and uh, you were using elastics to create cross bites and different things here. And there we didn't band the upper second molar, but we put a little finger back in here and put a little pressure on We put elastic and we pull that tooth out to line it up with the others. Now the lower second molar we always band, but a lot of times we not band the upper second, but it's better probably if you did bracket them or something to keep them in line. Now, here we took everything off and we just had the anterior teeth left them in that and to see if they were going to open because we could still close it. So we wore this for a few months after to keep this down but it still didn't tighten up real good in here. And I was never did know exactly what was keeping it from doing it. Now this is the uh, bite that he had when we come in we just observe that. Now here's something that we don't seem to catch on to it is that these teeth were down here and in other words they were in this area. When they were the bone up here that held the teeth up was down here too. When these teeth raised up the bone went with the teeth. Now I've had people in their 40s or even older than that do something. I had a guy putting lozenges in his mouth and pushing with his tongue to hold him up there to stop smoking. And he's 40 years old. And his bite opened, not quite this bad, but it opened about something like this just from putting the tongue up here to hold the lozenges up it opened this gentleman's bite and the teeth went up and the whole bone structure holding those teeth went with them. Now the bone follows the teeth if you just go gently along with them and so there's no reason if I wanted to move these teeth out here and if I just spread this out, these teeth don't come out of the bone and leave the bone back inside the mouth. The bone goes with the teeth. And that seems to be very hard to get across to people. They think, uh, or surgeons are kind of guilty of this too, that you've got to go up here and section this bone off and bring the bone out to have bone out here for the teeth. If you just push the teeth out, gradually go out, the bone goes with them. I have expanded thousands of teeth, and I do not know of any that I have pulled out of the bone. Now, if you hold this tooth where it is, and this tooth where these teeth where they are, and take this one and pull it out, you can strip it. In other words, you can pull the root through the bone structure because this is staying and this is staying you could pull it out and you'd have the roots kind of stripped of some of its bone in here but if you take this whole group and move it out the bone goes with the teeth if you move them up the bone goes with them they don't get buried up in the if you just take one tooth and pull it down and hold these two, you can pull it out and give it a little more root structure if you want to. But you gotta hold the ones on each side when you pull that one down. Now, uh, that is some things that you can observe. Just observe what happens to your patients. Be very careful and know why it happened in there and it helps you learn a lot about orthodontics and how to do it. Now this is a nice young man. This was that, uh, this is not the date right here. Uh, this was back in the early 70s 
and I think we finished him a few years later and had some pictures of him back after he grew up. Uh, I think guy became a policeman there in Hearst. He's a very fine guy. Uh, here we pulled it off and the teeth would stay down pretty good. Now let me tell you something else. You can put a retainer in. You know, have your loop that runs around like this and then go back in here and you solder it to the other deal on your retainer. And if you have somebody that's got an open bite situation and you don't know or you can't stop them from putting some pressure on these teeth, you put this labial bar of your retainer there and put these teeth are rising up, in other words, and you put just a slight amount of acrylic in here and you snap this bar over that acrylic. In other words, the if uh, let me just draw that off a little bit. I'm going to make a white sheet here. Now we've got a tooth coming down something like this, you know. Now we have a retainer wire in here. If you bend this wire where it's in other words, it comes in, you bend it where it's down here somewhere, and now you push it up to this point, and you put just a little a real good composite in under the wire, and hold the wire, or harden it with the wire in that position. Now, this, this is a pretty rough tooth surface. Uh, now, when you slip your retainer in, this wire will stop right here, but you push it and it'll snap over that little uh, bit of acrylic to draw it off bigger. Say your wire is something like this and your acrylic would be uh, not acrylic. It's a good hard composite. And so when you come up in here with the wire, it'll kind of spring the wire back out and then it'll snap back into this position. And that tooth will have whatever force you put on this wire will be this wire would be tended to bring it down all the time that he's wearing this retainer. Now that pushes the the body of the retainer up into the roof of the mouth. So you don't want to put too much of this force on, but just a slight force frequently will be enough to keep this tooth in position wherever you want it. And that's the way we uh, fix these retainers where you can pick them where you can't, fix them where you can't hardly take them out of the mouth, really. And I don't ever run any wire over the occlusal surface, even though it looks like you may have a spot in between two teeth here that, and you could run a wire in there. Every one of those that I look at, when the patient bites down in there, the teeth hit this wire, and that makes the thing go one way when they're wearing retainer. When they take it out, it goes another way. So I just don't use occlusal wires on my retainers. And I hope everybody gets that. I've harped on it enough. You know, you can take these retainers and fix uh, acrylic or good composite over or under the wire and snap it in there and you can't take them out hardly. you got to spring them to them. Okay, let's uh, hush up on that point here and we'll go on through, through with this. And uh, the roof of this young man's mouth, it kind of shows he was putting something up in there, you know, that it kind of kept that roof from having its normal shape. Down below, everything looked good. Now, here he is, he's grown up. I mean, he's about six foot four. Comes in, has to fold him up to get him in the uh, dental chair, you know. And, uh, just a nice guy, though. And he's a policeman there. And his teeth are still open, so I had to put a little of that acrylic under the wire, you know, and 
push down on it, and then he'd have to snap it up over it to keep them keep the bite closed like that. Uh, anyway, that's the end of that. I hope you gain something from that, and hope you observe your own work and what you do, and it will tell you a lot about what actually happens in orthodontics, what happens to the bone and the roots and the whole thing as they get older. Teeth move where you've got pressure on them, but this counteracting pressure, this pressure from occlusion, pressure from vacuum, just at night people suck a vacuum and it will pull the bicuspids uh, in. A lot of times they're they'll have a kind of an hourglass shape that comes in on the bicuspids and out the cuspids have bigger roots comes over and it comes in like that and I wondered for years what caused that and that's vacuum people can suck up tremendous vacuum inside their mouth and uh, pull those teeth in like that uh, okay well thank you for watching this and I uh, hope you get something out of it and I'm going to hush here and close this thing out if I can get this to work again. I know the other day I had one that didn't quit too good.